Hey guys, this is JM. I'm going to share some information on the record plot time. So I got a new Rocket Lake system and I've been playing with it. It's awesome. Uh, I built this because I'm actually trying to build the fastest Time Lord and we're doing some testing with the Rocket Lake and AVX 512 IFMA and some of the new instructions that uh, Rocket Lake has. And then I decided that, hey, Rocket Lake has PCIe Gen 4. What if I throw a PCIe Gen 4 Optane into a rocket lake and run a plot. Let's see what happens. And I accidentally, not so, I guess not so accidentally, uh, have the fastest uh, K equals 32 plot time. So I'm gonna go show you guys a little bit of details about the system and then I will walk you through the BIOS and then I'll explain a little bit more about this process. So uh, what I'm on right now is a, a T Asus Tough Gaming Z590 Plus and I'm using the 11th gen Intel Core i7 11700K and I have it overclocked uh, for one to two cores at 5.2 gigahertz and all cores sustained at 4.6. I talk a little bit more about it when I look at the BIOS settings, but um, basically this CPU is great. It can overclock very high, but it gets very hot. So I had an over stable overclock at 4.9 gigahertz, all cores sustained, and it was at like 100 C. Um, my garage is a little toasty right now, so uh, I might try it inside and see if I can get it at 4.9 sustained and see if I can beat the record. Uh, and then, Let's see, I have a, in here, a 800 gigabyte uh, Intel Optane P5800X. This is the Gen 4 Optane. It's basically the fastest SSD in the world. The good folks at Intel have let me do some testing on it. And um, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the plot time. So uh, I'm just gonna, I mean, this is, will be kind of a short video. Uh, I ran a K equals 32 with uh, 16 threads and just kind of max, max all the CPU and, uh, you know, basically tons of DRAM, doesn't really matter anything above 3400, doesn't really make a difference. Uh, just to see what the fastest plot time was, and I'll, I'll be doing some more testing on the system to see you know how much output this system can do with eight cores. Uh, it seems like a very fast CPU. So if I just go here quickly and do uh, an LS of the Chia logs, I'm gonna cat this with uh, phase. So I did phase one in 3461 seconds. And you can see, um, you know, with phase two, three, and four, which are single threaded, we have 98.3 CPU. So I bet if I put another one in here uh, and raid zero them together, I can get the IO wait time to absolutely zero. <laughs> so that would be amazing. That would be maybe the next test, but uh, this thing's pretty, pretty freaking fast. Uh, and then, so this is, this is the moment we've been waiting for. And there it is, guys. Nine four seven two seconds. So, where are we? That's <laughs> nine four seven two five by sixty. One hundred fifty seven minutes. Two point six hours. All right, that's it, guys. That is the fastest K equals thirty two. Um, uh, I'm gonna go dig into the BIOS settings now. Show you what it, exactly what I did. Hey guys, I know this is a strange way to look at the BIOS. Uh, for some reason, my capture card does not like this HDMI output on the Rocket Lake. So we'll just do it like this. Um, okay, so we're gonna hop into the BIOS, hit F7 for advanced mode. You can see here, this is version 0820. Um, this is the, what is it? Uh, Asus Tough Gaming Z590 Plus. And I'm using a uh, 11th gen Rocket Lake, a i7 11700K. Uh, I'm gonna get my hands on an 11900K at some point, but the i9 version. But uh, you'll see actually this one, after spending a few days with it, this is a great CPU. I probably wouldn't even recommend the other one. Uh, okay, so when I hit uh, F7 to go in advanced, you're gonna see, um, I'm gonna go to the AI tweaker. And all I did to get this over stable overclock was change the uh, DRAM setting to XMP one and this DRAM is DDR4 3200. Um, the adaptive boost technology I turned to enabled. ASUS multi-core enhancement I removed all limits. This is remember this sets the power settings to an enhanced setting that where uh, kind of removes the limits and sets and I'll go through the power settings and show you what that does. And oh, my cat here is trying to decide to mess with my my stuff here. Okay. Um, okay. Ow. Go away, cat. <laughs> Uh, okay, so remove all limits. Um, okay, so the core ratio by core. Uh, right now I have it set to one and two core at, at uh, 
5200 uh, megahertz, so 5.2 gigahertz. Um, this CPU actually worked fine at 5.3. Um, I had one crash, but I think that was due to this AVX offset. Um, I was testing this as a Time Lord as well, and uh, the Time Lord is very hot because it uses the AVX extensions. Um, the This Rocket Lake has two IFMA AVX 512 uh, instructions, so I've been trying to do some Time Lord testing, but that's that's for another video. Uh, and then I set the 8-core uh, turbo at 4.6. So this was perfectly stable at 4.9, uh, but the rocket lake got really hot, like, uh, you know, 100 degrees C. So um, I could probably go a little bit higher than 4.6, but this is what I did the test on, uh, just to give you guys some examples of, you know, if you wanted to tune this, you know, 4.6 gigahertz, all 8-core sustained, you know, you could basically you know, mess with that, but anywhere between 4.6 and 5 just uh, make sure you have a hot, very good cooler in the CPU. The CPU runs insanely hot. Uh, okay, auto, 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 uh, the DRAM. So OC tuner, boy, don't mess with this. This is, uh, if you if you mess with this, it starts automatically mucking with other settings. Uh, don't do that. That's, uh, just keep this thing freaking off. I don't know what the hell it does, but. Um, so if you go to internal CPU management, um, you'll see the only thing I've changed is the short duration power package limit to 446. This allows you to get a longer sustained um, turbos. And the other one was, um, you know, when you set the remove all limits, it actually sets these uh, current CPU cache limit and the long duration power limit to the max. And so that's good. And so nothing else you really have to mess with. Um, thermal velocity boost, I didn't mess with any of that, but uh, I hear Rocket Lake has some interesting features here, so I might actually give it a try at some point. Um, okay. And then the rest. So CPU configuration. Again, this is the uh, Rocket Lake uh, i7. Uh, obviously, all cores. Um, Hyper-threading. So what I found is hyper-threading doesn't actually do that much for plotting because the sorting, uh, you really need these single-thread locks and... Um, you know, for when you are doing the uh, phases two, three, and four, uh, I just, you know, I've, I've done a lot of A-B tests of like, you know, hyper-threading versus no hyper-threading as far as the number of physical cores to a system. And for the most part, I don't see uh, scaling in, um, yeah, any in plot times or, you know, plot total output for the system, I should say. So hyper-threading, just, I leave it enabled, but again, it's not all that great uh, for plotting. Um, so power management. Uh, so this is interesting. So this is where we go into, uh, on this one, I've disabled speed step, um, because when I did this, the rocket liked, liked to really change frequencies, um, just very, you know, depending on the workload. And then, um, you really want this to snap to those high frequencies. And if you disable speed step, it should <clears throat> just, and I'll show you here when I do some quick testing that it should just snap to this highest frequency. And, uh, speed shift enabled and turbo boots max enabled, you know, um, one of the things I have tried is disabling C states it worked really good on the non case queues on this case queue. It seems like enabling C states. And uh, I think I have it here package C state limit. I just have it stuck to C zero and C one, which is active. Uh, that seems to work pretty well on this rocket lake. Um, I haven't tested. I got to test it with it in disabled and see if I can still get the same core frequencies sustained, but uh, I suspect I will be able to just based on what I know about you know the rest of them. So if you have C states, C states off and speed step off, you should just have it be at these low frequencies when the CPU is idle. And then when it sees an active process, the core just ramps up to its max frequency and all is happy. And that's what you want for plotting. You just want fast core speed. Uh, so that was it. Uh, I actually did not mess with any of the voltages or any of the other overclock. You, you basically on the Rocket Lake, you want adaptive voltage. You don't want any of the other weird overclock um, voltage manual settings. It's just the, or else you're going to go way over heat and power. So um, yeah, I'll, let, I'll try to play with this more and see what uh, I can do. But this is basically the BIOS settings that I had that uh, I ran that uh, you know, plot time that has the, the record time apparently. So. Uh, okay, I'm going to go dig into the rest of it. Thanks, guys. So how I actually test that the core frequency is working, if I'm doing some quick BIOS changes, um, be nice on a system to basically, usually I install Grafana and Prometheus and actually have a dashboard where I can check the CPU frequency, but uh, 
on a system like this, right, I just kind of want a bare bones Linux install. I'm not going to go through all that work. And so, you know, you can see the basic, uh, you know, uh, cat slash proc slash CPU info is what I have in the guides. It basically gives you, you know, the core frequencies and you can watch the core frequencies. So what I do is I'll start a screen and I'll just call it stress. And then you can install stress. It's just APT install stress. Uh, and then you can dispatch, say if I dispatch uh, two cores, I can go back and run the same command. And you can see because we have, um, uh, we, we basically we have 5.2 set to two CPUs and so that the CPU frequency should um, you know, ramp up to 5.2. You can see that we're not getting exactly 4.6 on the other cores. This is because of the adaptive voltage. Um, even with speed step enabled, it should just snap to 4.6 and 5.2 in exactly the settings. It doesn't do, doesn't do that exactly. You can see it just kind of gets close based on the thermal and um, you can see, yeah, with two cores active, we're running two. It's trying to do two at 5.2. And then if I uh, basically do a sensors, I can see, you know, basically two of the cores are getting pretty toasty um, as, as as expected, right? It's looking at core three and core six. So Intel Turbo Boost 3.0 will, will actually use the, um, you know, the best cores for, for the highest overclock. And that's good, right? You want the, the, the cores that produce the least amount of heat to be the ones that you run at the fastest frequency. And so if I wanted to go in here and go back to my screen and control C it, cancel it. If I want to run 15 uh, workers with stress, um, you can see here now everything should snap to 4.6 4 gigahertz, exactly what we set in the BIOS. So this is what I do just to do quick tests and make sure my BIOS is functioning correctly. I found a lot of BIOSes do weird stuff. So just, just do this. Like if, even if you think you set the right settings, just go in and make sure that the cores are actually operating at the frequency they're supposed to run at. You can see with all cores running, ooh, this rocket lake gets toasty. We can even watch. And one of uh, sensors, oops. Oops. And yeah, here we go. So yeah, it's running pretty toasty. Um, high 80s, you know, if I ran this at 4.9, you know, it gets about 90 C, which is not so good. Uh, I like to keep my CPUs, you know, under, under 90 for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, you can technically the go a little bit hotter and the rated temperature, I, th I think is hundred C. So, uh, that's it. So, um, you know, if you wanted to, uh, kill all the screens, that's an easy way to, to nuke everything and go back to normal. So uh, yeah, there it is, that's how I test CPU frequency, thanks.